Welcome back and join me on this adventure for one of my favorite dives I've been on in a while. Yo. We had a mixture of both familiar and new faces. A solid crew, to say the least. Late. I uh, know, it's unacceptable, man. It's like 9.05. You're never calling me again. Yeah, last time. Back here at Souk. Good old ALR Farms, got an awesome crew with us. We're gonna go hike and dive some new coastline, check out some new spots, which is always fun. Another beautiful day, I can't believe it. We've had like, I don't know, a month, maybe two months of sunshine. As nice as it is, uh, it's not really normal. A lot of salmon right now are struggling to get up the streams because there's no water, which is not good for the ecosystems, but take the good with the bad. We're all gonna hike in, gear up at the spot, and hopefully good this no wind awesome if you dive this area come prepared and be ready for a solid hike it's a great spot but it's exercise getting down to the dive spot our heart rates are going to be up but all worth it and what goes up must go down i think we have a hill coming up right in front of us uh, so we get to relax again to the channel is shallow but to the tip of the rock is it gets better but then also the current getting stronger too. Soft tide is at 12, it's going to the east. So there's current gonna go against to us when we dive over there. But if we stay just in the shelter, we'll be fine. And also you see there's a buoy in the kelp zone. Yeah. There's a bend and trap there. Last time I was trying to drag it out, but it was it was tangled with kelp so bad. But this time if we are jumping in there, I'm gonna get that out. down here we made it to the spot there's something about diving these new areas it gets your adrenaline up which is kind of intuitive because when you free dive you want to be zen and relax but yeah I'm super super stoked to jump in and this here looks pretty good and the coast again looks superb hopefully we see some good life the guys have been seeing uh, rock greenling in the area so that's my uh, my goal today is to try to find one of those as long as the visibility holds it down I'm sure we're gonna have a blast. First time in a smooth cell, how's it feel, man? It feels great, I'm just excited to be out here, man. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. I haven't been to Sook in two years and really look forward to it. What a beautiful day. I mean, the weather's still on our side this year. And it's so blessed with the weather. It's uh, October already. We still got like uh, maybe 22 Celsius and it's super warm. And uh, also for me, first time diving here. We'll see in the water. Yeah. It's funny, most of us barely knew each other, but we were chatting away like we'd known each other for years. Such a great community. What was that? Was that a whale? Uh, I think it's a whale because I don't see other fins. Yeah, that was big, man. That's a, oh, yeah, and the sea lion's swimming away, right? Oh, yeah. What? Crazy, man. That thing just breached like no tomorrow. That is awesome. Yeah, it sounded like a shotgun going off. Yeah, that whale's in for a good show. Oh man, it came right up to his boat, look at that. See the guy over there? Some people think filming takes away from an experience, but I feel as though the opposite is true. Since getting into videography, I'm always hyper-focused on my environment, and I'm looking at wildlife and scenery through a new lens, both literally and metaphorically speaking. I'm now finding beauty and appreciation for the little things in life that I might otherwise have glanced over. For example, spotters don't even creep me out anymore. In fact, I find them rather spectacular. The best part is, I'm able to relive all my experiences and share them with my friends and family and anyone else who chooses to click on a thumbnail. I often feel myself boxing as it's the next best thing to having a coach over my shoulders. Is my chin tucked? Are my elbows in? Are my hands down leaving me exposed? I like these angles of me diving, but I also try and learn from the footage. It's easy to develop bad habits without even realizing it. When it comes to free diving, bad habits can significantly reduce bottom times and even lead to pressure-related injuries at depth. I have a few things I need to work on. We spent some time in the kelp, enjoying it while we still can. Kelp is seasonal and will begin to thin out sooner than later. It's all good though. If it was around 24-7, it might not feel as special. Who am I kidding? Of course it would. Heads up while diving in kelp, I smoked my head on this log. How's it going, female kelp greenling? What's up, my fish eating an enemy? How's it hanging, rock scallops? 
I find it crazy how one species of fish can have so many coloring and pattern variations. I swear link cod are like snowflakes. No two will ever be identical. I came across this massive school of what I presume to be herring. As you may recall from some of my previous videos, diving in bait balls and good visibility is one of my favorite things to do in the ocean. There's something about it that's hard to explain. In one way, you feel large and powerful amongst all the tiny fish, but in another way, you feel small and vulnerable due to the sheer quantity. It's an exhilarating experience and one that footage fails to do justice. Bear with me as this footage might drag on a little longer than necessary, but it makes me smile when I watch it, so I couldn't bring myself to cut any of it out. Just put yourself in my fins for a minute, sit back, and enjoy. Or hey, you know what? Grab your own set of fins and go and catch these moments for yourself. They're priceless. some landlocked Canadians watch my content as well, so this edit is dedicated to you. I'm stoked that I'm able to bring the Pacific Ocean to your computer screen. Ethan called me over and I followed him down 15 meters to an octopus den. This was the third one in a row I saw and some of the best footage I captured to date. I was hyped. Diving Sports hooked up this Cressy Corvina a while ago and it wasn't getting much use, so I wanted it to go to a good home. I hooked it up to Garrett as he was more than deserving. Check out his wicked YouTube channel, his editing style and content are both amazing. I got lucky with this clip, my camera froze but I got it reset just as these juvenile harvest seal came to check me out. Told you it was an awesome dive. just wrapped up the majority of our dive. What a great, great day. We were seeing whales while we were in the water. Not on the water, but from a distance. I uh, saw some octopus, schools of rockfish, really good visibility. Herring all over the place, or they might be anchovies, I'm not positive. If you got an ID, let me know. Oh, such a good time. I'm gonna jump back in. Ethan found a crab trap, so I'm gonna help him get that out of the water, bring it back to the shore. So it's not gonna trap any marine life. I might fill my bag up with some treats, uh, sea cucumber and sea urchin, and then eventually make way back to Nanaimo. Love this coastline. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in the winter diving here, a little bit closer than the west coast, well, I guess northern west coast, and uh, the free diving here is phenomenal. Can't beat it. All right, I'm gonna get back in the water. I'm getting a bit chilly, but uh, got a mission. I'm not trying to sound like a broken record, but I'm still irritated that we can't harvest crab in the Pacific Rim National Park, but trapping is okay. We find lost gear all over the place. I have a really hard time understanding the rationale behind that decision. Oh well, at least we get this ghost gear out of the ocean. Shout out to Mensa Diving Equipment for this amazing catch bag. It's really been a game changer. Not only can it be opened with one hand, it's also capable of holding a large bounty and it's extremely durable. I really put it through the test on the hike back to the vehicle and it passed with flying colors. These were the only two Sunstar we encountered on this dive. Better than zero, but still a small fraction of what there should be. Here's Sunstar, let us help. Thanks Ethan for this footage, and also for the inspiration to eat more sea urchin. They're high in protein, omega-3 fatty acid, and due to all the kelp they eat, they're loaded with essential vitamins. I'm going to try and incorporate them into a meal each week. In the ocean in October without a wetsuit, life's good in British Columbia. How's that, Roger? Bent. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. 
How's you do, man? Oh, pretty good. Two, uh, two kelp greenlings. Maybe a, you know, a couple of dozen limpets. So, would be a good uh, taco, taco night. I did get myself. I got my eight or so sea cucumber, and I got I think seven sea urchin, and trying to make some pasta. So stay tuned for that. Are you taking that back? I guess so. Eh? That's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. At least it's not in the ocean. Yeah, good day or good heat of the day. Yeah. I was hoping it would land me a rock greenling, but no. Nope. Wanna see my catch today? Yeah, man. What you get there, man? My new decoration. Make a lamp, maybe? <laughs> Some people make lamps. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, they put a little light in them and stuff. Halloween lamp. Yeah, yeah. Carve, a, carve an urchin. All good things must come to an end. And time to hike back with wet dive gear and a bunch of seafood. It's a little bit heavier than the way here, but. Going back, feeling full, that's for sure. Do you want to try to touch one? Uh, it's a puppy. What's their name, Sayla? Uh, sea urchin. Sea urchin? Yeah. They're pretty cute, aren't they? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Aw, they're so cute. Just for reference, we hiked for about a half hour to the car, and then we drove for about two hours, and this guy's still Beak. alive. All of them are for that Beak. matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the urchin we cleaned off on shore. Yeah, yeah. Gonna uh, make some yeah, pasta. Yeah. You like those, buddy? Me. Yeah. It's Gonna make some pasta, and pasta sauce. Sea cucumber are mostly water when you pull them out of the ocean. So you gotta cut off the ends, drain out all their guts and water. I transport them like this, and then when I get them home, cut them right down the middle, and then I'll take that, take that meat right off. You don't wanna carry a dive bag with eight, nine, 10 pounds of water with you uh, when you're going back to your vehicle. Plus you're gonna make more of a mess in your car. So this is the way to do it. Besides tasting good, sea cucumber are a gold mine of nutrition and offer health benefits unmatched by other sources of food. I don't eat meat, and the only seafood I eat is caught by me. So it's important that I feed my body with the best fuel sources available. You add that to sustainability, and sea cucumber make out to be one of the top contenders. There we go, nice big bowl of prepared sea cucumber. I got both the husk and the meat in there. I'm gonna try to cook both. Probably biting off more than I can chew here, but don't wanna put any of this to waste. My buddy Fred, who I dove with today, he said he can freeze sea cucumber, so I might do that with some of this as well. Next up, I'm gonna try to prepare some sea urchin. I don't feel bad if I put these to waste because there's an overpopulation, and as I've made clear in my videos, uh, they're kind of wreaking havoc on the ecosystems here. Uh, so I'm gonna get the nice creamy roe from the inside, and put that into some cream and butter and make a nice sauce. Throw it all into a pasta. In store, urchin are expensive as they're considered a delicacy. I'm thinking about using some as fertilizer. And that's what we're after and right there, that nice uni right there, that rope. Can't get much fresher than this unless you eat it right out of the ocean. I'd be lying if I said doing this after three or four hours of driving today and a bunch of diving and hiking wasn't exhausting, but it's all done now. I'm way too lazy to cook. I think I'm gonna have to continue this in the morning, put all this stuff in the fridge, and uh, wake up and make some pasta for lunch or something. That should be fun. Next day here, get the uni all clean up and prepared. Same with the sea cucumber. Now let's feel really wasteful throwing these husks out, since that's the majority of the food. So I'm gonna try to cook this stuff up. If you get a recipe for me, let me know. But I'm going to throw it in here and uh, soften it and then throw it on a pan. We got our garlic in there simmering and not oh, fog on the lens, but you get the idea. And here we go. Minor correction, that was ginger in the pot, not garlic. First step for the pasta, chop up some shallots. Next, cook up some pasta. The recipe called for spaghetti, but really any noodle will do. From there, some olive oil in a pan and fry the shallots, or alternatively, onion. Don't forget the garlic. Is your mouth watering yet? The recipe calls for white wine. We found this non-alcoholic stuff at the superstore. So much cheaper than what you find at a liquor store. Next, the main ingredient, sea urchin. We probably could have used half this amount, but no complaints. 
I put my own twist on the recipe and added some sea cucumber because, hey, why not? Same deal, half this amount of sea cucumber would have been plenty. It's crazy to think this meal would have been hundreds of dollars in a restaurant. In lieu of butter, we added a cup or so of this heavy cream. Ethan hooked up the spice last year and I've been using it religiously ever since. This is our third bottle. Time to add the pasta. It's shrunk quite a bit, but I'm gonna try frying these up on a pan with some uh, Asian sauce. That's uh, gonna be yummy, hopefully. I was really banking on this recipe turning out. After reading about all the health benefits in the husk, I didn't want to have to throw it out. Luckily, it was looking pretty tasty. Mon Kun crashed at my place the night before and brought me this Korean barbecue sauce. Impeccable timing, as it was the perfect sauce for this fried sea cucumber husk. There you go, fried husk with a side of uni pasta. First up, the sea cucumber. Let's see how it goes. Good texture. Not, not too chewy. I mean, I'm doing a taste test. This is a sea cucumber husk. Wow. I like it. It's really good. I'd eat that again in a heartbeat. That's a better texture than octopus. What's up? It's here. <laughs> You're gonna have that. It's Cooked good. it for like, I don't know, I think about an hour. Boiled it for an hour. And then put it on the pan. Fried it up. And uh, put that sauce on there. Yeah, it's really delicious. 100% eat that again. And now the uni pasta. Oh, that is awesome, Sayla. Try bite. Try bite. Let me know what, if you like it. Try bite. Good, eh? Do you like it? Oh, uh, it's like, oh, it's like butter. It's so creamy. Yeah. Okay, this was way too much work. I'm not gonna do this very often. You wanna try something too, buddy? Way too much work. I'm not gonna do this very often, but <laughs> I'm definitely gonna do it again. Want another bite? Yeah. Ah, see, she liked it. Yeah, found it. You wanna try the sea cucumber? Oh. Mmm, it was worth it, worth it. Thank you, thank you for filming. If you enjoyed this edit as much as I enjoyed the meal, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Peace and love.